Well, we have time now for you to uh, respond, uh, raise questions, make comments, offer alternative proposals. <laughs> I guess you have to come up the microphone, right? Like Billy Graham used to say, who will be first? Come on down. Who will be first? <laughs> I very much appreciated what you had to say about the life we choose to live and the story we choose to tell being a much better alternative than what is being offered to us by the zeitgeist the, the group consciousness that we find ourselves in at this moment. I really appreciated that message. It was a very strong and powerful message. I had a question about that period of judges where there's a tribal confederacy and no one single leader. When something within a person or something in the community says, lead us. When, when one among us becomes uh, primus inter pares, a first among equals, can you speak to that? What, what's that role for us today? Jim Wallace, you all know Jim Wallace? And I, Brian McLaren. I think are both saying that institutions now will not save us. It will take movements. Movements are products of the spirit. And people do rise up in ways that we don't understand and can't explain. Nobody elected Martin Luther King. There it, was no office. That's right. Before he showed now, up. He was, a very, he was a very cunning political manager, no doubt. But he was led by the Spirit. And people could see it. So, you know, it's exceedingly difficult to know how to act that out. But to say, you know, in a local congregation, it's happening more and more in local congregations, for God's sake, don't wait on the session. If you wait on the session, you'll wait forever. Get some people and go. I saw a film, some of you may have seen it. It was a documentary on... Um, the revolution in Algeria when they got free of France. Some of you may know this. And there was an organized revolution, this is a long time ago now, an organized revolution, and the French government sent in military officers with incredible brutality and torture and killed the revolution. And then the film said, Fifteen years later, it started on the streets, and there were no leaders, and nobody knew it had happened, and the French government couldn't stop it, and de Gaulle gave in. So Presbyterians are very neglectful of the work of the Spirit because it's a little bit loosey-goosey for Presbyterians. <laughs> but the book of Acts, the book of Acts is all about the early apostles being led by the Spirit in ways that terrified the Roman Empire. They kept hauling them into court and said, why are you doing this? And they said, I don't know. I can't really tell you. <laughs> 
There is a book by Gail Godwin. Do you know her? She writes women's novels. And one of her earliest novels was called The Finishing School. It's about this older woman mentoring this young girl, Justin, and she's teaching her how to become an adult. And I only remember one line from the novel. The woman says to the girl, do not congeal too quickly. <laughs> Most of us are congealed. <laughs> yeah. I want to be known, I want to be known as a liberal. Man, all my friends are liberals. And I'm going to move out of that. <laughs> well, whatever. So we, we slot ourselves and we get slaughtered. Families do this. You're the bright child in our family. We want you to get a doctorate. You're not so smart, but you're good with your hands. Why don't you become a carpenter or whatever? And college kids do it to each other. We slot and pastors slot and people slot pastors. And, and the, the, the problem of the spirit is to say, no, that's not who I am. God has more than that in mind yet for me. We call that spirituality. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Well, we're here and then here. Okay. Yep. I, I, I come as a Catholic and... Oh. Um, <laughs> um, I, um, I know you from Eden Theological Seminary and there were great ties between Eden Theological Seminary and Webster College in those days it was just college not university right across the street from each other eventually libraries merged big things happened and I also feel that you have the same kind of fire that Carol Stumuller had, and he was a Catholic and became head of Catholic Society, Biblical Society of America, and I got to listen to him because I was in that order of nuns before I left and got married and had Were kids. Were you Loretta? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, and what we have going on here in Kansas City with a new nuclear weapons production plant, the first in 30, 32 years in the country, has just kind of wiped out some of us. But a bunch of the Catholic workers uh, have said, when there's hungry people, we feed them, and when there's injustice, we resist. And so there's this growing little clutch uh, that um, is fighting that. And I had intended to say to you, like I could have said to Carol Stumiller, what would Amos say to this new nuclear weapon production plant going up with Kansas City money, municipal bonds? I mean, and most of our city doesn't know this. But um, I, I was going to ask you about Amos, and here you talked about the Pentateuch, and you were heavy into national security state, but you still had some hope. And so I just want to say thanks from the Catholics and from Loretta and from Webster and um, Catholic and you, Worker, and you know, all, Dorothy all, Day. Thanks all from Dorothy of those Day. things that happened between us in those days we, was because of John the 23rd, yeah, yeah. who was a man of the Spirit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, but you caught the hope. I mean, yes, yep. all this national security stuff. Yep. Yes, all the hatred of peoples and yep. the injustice, yep. but still some, yep. some hope springing yep. forth. So, thank you. Thank you. I have to tell you a joke about that. Eden Seminary, where I taught, was across the street from Webster College, which at that time was a, was a women's college governed by the Sisters of Loretta. And one of the jokes at Eden Seminary, which you wouldn't have known about, is when a new seminarian came, uh, the upper class people would have their suits on and give him the Bible and said, it's your turn. He said, it's my turn to do what? He said, it's your turn to go over Webster College and sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. <laughs> it's been delightful to hear you speak. Thank you. Uh, there are three prophets that are still alive in the land. I think there are four, really. Uh, one is Dr. King. 
Uh, the other one is John Calvin. And the third one is Abraham Lincoln, who happened to be a very good Presbyterian. For those of us who want to be the beloved community in the 21st century, how can we, as individuals, in this culture and in this time, stand for a vision of an alternative culture, being so materialistic in our yep. outlook, saying that our God is yep. getting ahead. Yep. Our God is not the God yep. of Yahweh. Yep. Well, there's no blueprint. I saw a black preacher on television preaching about the Exodus. And he said when Moses and the children of Israel arrived at the Red Sea, the sea did not open. He said they put their foot in the water, and the water opened that far. And when they put that foot in, it opened that far. You had to go. So, you know, I, I have no blueprint for that either, except that people, everybody, needs to take the step she is able to take. Because what we do know is that when you take a step, you get energy for the next step. And you find out in ways you don't even know that there are some other people ready to take the step with you. So this is, a, this is simply a recognition that we live in a time when we cannot be passive Christians. So the question is, how will we act in faithfulness, given who I am and where I am? And for most of us, that's not very heroic. But push the envelope. Push it where you're able to push it. Think a new thought. Get a new conversation partner. Find out about some unoccupied space that you have not yet found out about. And from time to time, the Spirit meets us there. That's a very elusive answer, but that's what I think. Yeah. Thank you. One more?